Hi, I'm the director for Common Knowledge Trust. And even though we deal with pregnancy and childbirth and carry the online birthing classes full of the skills that fathers and mothers developed in the early 1970s so that we could all be skilled to prepare our body for birth and to use skills to birth our babies in all birth situations, we're focusing right now on the coronavirus because that is what is happening worldwide. And what we've been saying as an NGO, that's, whose name is Common Knowledge Trust, is that we need to pass on to one another the skills that each of us can use to help protect ourselves and our family, friends and coworkers and others around us. So right now the public health message is to have social distancing, everything's shut down, to wash your hands. And what happens if you feel sick? So no one's yet addressing that, although my daughter sent me an excellent audio, I'm trying to get a link to that, which comes from physicians in China who've done autopsies and what they're saying. So this is going to start to become more common knowledge which is what can we do for ourselves? So we're talking about noticing symptoms. So the symptoms of the coronavirus are fatigue, a soreness in the back of the nose or in the throat, not necessarily in the glands, a dry cough, a fever, a shortness of breath. Yet in reality, the virus has been multiplying in us for three to five days before we get the cough or the fever or the shortness of breath. So what we can do, we have to do as soon as we notice something. So let's talk about what noticing something is. All of us have taken a bite of something. Some of us have noticed that it tastes off, but we've decided to swallow it anyway. Others, we've been traveling and we've eaten something. But at some point, we notice a slight uh, in our tummy. That's what we're talking about with this. The virus comes in through your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. And it's going to multiply in the back of your nose and up in the back of your mouth. Once it multiplies to an extent, when the viral load gets big enough, it will migrate down into your respiratory system. And that's when you're at risk of getting very, very sick or dying. So it's a question of teaching ourselves and each other to notice. Now it becomes complicated. I at the moment have autumn allergies. So I notice that the back of my nose is feeling quite raw now. So I'm using the techniques that would be used for this as well, which is to gargle with slightly warm salt water at least three times a day or more until the symptoms ease. So what we need to understand is that we need to notice very soon. And why don't we notice soon? Well, we've developed a habit, and that habit has been a dependency on the medical community. And this is what the habit sounds like. Well, I'm not feeling very well, but I'm going to wait for a few days, and if I get worse, I'll go to the doctor and they'll give me something. And we all know at the moment that the doctors don't know what to do. They can't really prevent this. They're telling us, don't go out, don't do anything, right? That's their prevention. But what if we get sick? So that's that other level of prevention, which is noticing right away and doing something. And why did we choose as common knowledge trust, gargle with slightly salty, warm water at least three times a day or more? Because that's what doctors, nurses, and dentists have told us for years. It's no different than them saying to us, if you have a cut, keep it clean. What we know is if we can reduce the bacterial or viral or yeast load, then we don't necessarily get sick or an infection. So with this virus, it is absolutely vitally important that we do not wait until we get fatigue or a dry cough. We've waited three to five days as this doctor in China, and I, I will get the audio link somewhere, somehow, got passed on to my daughter through a friend who also doesn't have the link. And what they were saying is that this disease wrecks your lungs. 
And so we have to go back and try to prevent it from getting into our lungs. And the way we prevent it from getting into our lungs is noticing whether we have a soreness in the back of our nose and the back of our throat. And then gargling with warm, salty water. Now, other people have said, well, I gargle with colloidal silver. That's okay. Or with golden seal or with hypericum and and um, calendula or mouthwash or alcohol. It, it doesn't really matter. It means noticing and doing something right away. You know, we all watched films where they didn't have pain relief, so they poured whiskey on a wound. Why did they do that? They wanted to prevent infection. This is a virus. We have to prevent it from getting worse. We can't rely on the medical profession, and they must rely on us. It's now our responsibility. We can't self-isolate forever. If you self-isolate for two weeks, you're going out into the environment, it's still there. And the chances are it's going to still be there. So we have to take a multiple prong approach. And one approach is us noticing when we have a soreness in the back of our nose and throat, because that's where this virus, like many, breed and multiply because they like warm, moist, dark places. And so we have to notice sooner and then choose to act right away. And to get all of our family, friends, and co-workers to be doing this, you are responsible for passing this on. We can pass it on to some degree, but you have to pass it on and have to do it. You have to have a willingness to do it. We have to stop the habit that was, oh, I feel a little bit poorly, but I'm going to wait for a few days, and if I don't get better, I'll go to the doctor and they'll give me something. We have to do something for ourselves. So... What are we saying to you? If you notice a soreness in the back of your nose or your throat, then gargle with slightly warm salt water. You can choose mouthwash if you want. Salt's cheaper, right? (laughs) So, you know, do that. On this audio tape, they make other suggestions, like if your mouth is dry, drink some warm water. The Chinese don't eat cold foods because they think it makes it harder for your body to then warm up that substance. So it's always best to have warm things. So warm, slightly salt water. Gargle with it at least three times a day or whenever you feel that irritation. I also snort up slightly salt water up my nose. Or if I had an elderly person who couldn't do that or a child who couldn't do that or I didn't want to do it, I would just take slightly salt water and do this and make certain that it, that where the viruses enter first hit a, an environment they don't particularly like. You can do it with baking soda. You can do it with diluted apple cider vinegar. Choose and pick what you want. There are throat sprays out there. Do it with that. doesn't matter. So what our NGO is saying, if you notice, and how soon do you notice it? Well, most of us notice these things really quickly because our body tells us. Do we pay attention? No, we don't. Do we act on it? No, we don't. Should we? We have to at this point. We have to. The medical profession is saying we are overburdened and they're overburdened by people who waited three to five days and ended up with this virus penetrating their lungs. We have to stop this. It's your responsibility. Now, we posted on Facebook, uh, on a Facebook group yesterday, and we had a lot of people, as we say in the description, coming back at us saying, this is fake news or this is the natural health scam, right? or why aren't doctors already telling us? So I want to talk about this. First of all, gargling with slightly warm, salty water, we have been told to do this pretty much worldwide. And if it isn't gargling with warm salt water, it's gargling with something if you have a sore throat. Okay, And everybody knows to keep wounds clean if you don't want to have an infection. So this is not fake news. We've all been doing it. Chemotherapy patients have come up to us constantly and said, after chemotherapy, our doctors told us it is essential 
for you to gargle three times a day with slightly salt water so you don't get sick because your immune system is depressed after chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy patients who have come up to me as the director of our NGO have said, I gargled three times a day, but others didn't, and they got sick or sicker. And our doctors always praise the ones who did gargle after chemotherapy with slightly salt water three times a day because it didn't burden them with the secondary infections. So we know that this is something, if you've had a tooth extraction, you've been told to do this as well. So we know that this is common knowledge. It's not fake news. The other is, is this a natural health scam? <laughs> oh my God. Doctors, dentists, nurses have been telling us for years and years. I'm 75. I grew up just as penicillin became available. What do you think we did before these things? We used simple things like this. And the question which was the most profound was why have our doctors not telling us to do this if we should? And that's really simple. They are blown out. Okay, There were two choices to be made here. Some countries are doing it one way and some the other. The two choices were simple. Close everything down, get everybody away from everybody else, and hope like hell this virus just goes away. And that's what the country I'm living in, New Zealand, is doing. Just shut everything down. Okay, And this is what you know, Wuhan in China did. They shut it all down. And they shut down a lot of activities in other parts of the country as well. Even though they now know it's a cluster disease. But they shut it down. Other countries, Mexico, Switzerland, Holland, are using a herd immunity approach. We don't know, and we won't know for a long time, which is better. We will not know. This may come back next year. What are we going to do after isolation? We go out, you know, so we do not know. We don't know what's going to happen out there. What we know is what we can do if we notice in our body that we have a slight soreness in the back of our nose and our throat. We can do something. And what happens if we do that? Well, if you've ever done it and felt better, then you know you feel better. So let's imagine that all of your family knows how to do it. And let's imagine that that information spreads the same way the coronavirus spreads, which is if you know it, you tell three other people and they tell three other people. Then soon, a lot of people in your community, if they notice that the back of their nose is sore and the back of their throat is sore, that they start to gargle with, we just say warm, slightly salty water or mouthwash or alcohol or any natural remedy or use an over-the-counter throat spray. Does not matter. If you keep doing it for three to five days or up to a week until the symptoms resolve, you still may get sick, but you may not get as sick, or you may not get sick at all. So it's our responsibility to viral spread this how-to, because doctors are so blown out and nurses are so blown out that they are not thinking about what they told us as a simple prophylactic. And we have to now pick up the ball. It's our responsibility to cut down the viral load in our bodies, in our communities. And we can do that by washing surfaces and not holding hands or touching each other, never going out. But the virus can be anywhere. So the issue is if we don't feel well, we have to notice that right away and do something. So see you later. I'm getting a phone call.